Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including today, the first major cable TV network of 2024 is shutting down and going streaming only. We'll tell you what network it is and why we expect many more to follow in 2024. The FCC is voting soon. They set a date to impose new rules that would stop cable TV companies from all those undisclosed hidden fees in the advertisement. Yes, they're disclosed, but the advertised price you see on the, on the ads um, are not the true one. You have that tiny text or you gotta go to another page to find it somewhere on their website. They're proposing rules from the FCC that would prevent cable TV companies from doing that and force them to advertise the true cost of their service. And Pluto TV is continuing to add more content from NBC Universal. We'll tell you what's happening there and more here real soon. First though, if you're new here, we can find a link to each story I talk about in the show. It's in the first pinned comment. I'll put a link to each story there so you can read them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, uh, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here so YouTube recommends our videos to more people. It really does help us and hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of television so watch what you enjoy. With that said, let's dive into it. Now we talked for some time about how 2024 would likely see many cable TV networks shut down and now the first one has. TV Japan, which has been delivering Japanese language television in the United States for 30 years, has announced that on March 20th they will shut down and will launch a new streaming service that will cost $25 a month. This is a very popular channel um, amongst people who are from Japan but live in the United States or people who maybe just have a fascination for their television. And uh, now it's going to be shutting down. Now we propose that, or we believe that this would be just one of many to come this year. But this is impacting a myriad of streaming services, including cable TV companies who offer the channel. Um, so keep, keep your eyes out for other ones. What's happening here is they're just saying it's just not worth it to put on all these networks. Rather, they're going to sell direct. 25 bucks is pretty steep. But they have a kind of a niche market. They have access to content and it's the only way to watch it here in the United States legally. So they're, they're banking on the idea that they could get more money from streaming because they have content that is kind of wall garden. It's not something you can just go to Disney Plus and watch there, for example. We'll keep a very close eye on this, but I suspect we will see many small cable companies or networks shut down, those MTV2s, but other, also other networks like um, Japan TV, which for 30 years has been a very popular network. While most people may not know its name, if you're somebody who enjoys that kind of content, you're well aware of that service. I suspect maybe as many as 20 to 30 cable networks over the next 12 months or so will shut down. Maybe a little less, maybe a little bit more, but we're getting to a point where it's just not financially stable for a lot of these companies to continue to operate these small um, channels with very small viewership. All right, the FCC's vote will vote on a all-in rule that will force cable TV companies to include all the hidden fees and taxes in the advertised price. So you've probably seen this for a while. Um, hey, we can give you television for $49, cheaper than streaming. What they don't say is there's a broadcast television fee. That one really gets me because they advertise locals as part of that package, but then they charge an additional, sometimes 30 bucks or more, uh, depending on where you live. For locals, there's a regional sports network fee, HD technology fee, device rentals, the list goes on and on. Under this rule, the FCC will force cable companies and others to include these fees in the advertised price. No longer would be that wall of barely readable text at the bottom or telling you to go to their website on a third page somewhere hidden in their FAQ to find out all the fees and taxes. This will now have to be fully disclosed up front. We'll see how that plays out. Now, of course, the cable companies are objecting to this. I wouldn't be surprised to see this end up in court. And this could be a long legal battle. Even if they vote it to happen in March, who knows when it will actually take effect. It will, there will be a grace period. It will be a challenge in courts. Courts may delay it while it gets reviewed. Uh, I know a lot of people here would love to see this because, let's be honest, we hear that all the time. Wow, you know, YouTube TV is $72. I can get Spectrum or Comcast or whoever for less than that. You say, well, you know, you have to add the broadcast television fee, the HD, the device rental fees, the list goes on and on. Now with this though, you would put it into that and you would now just have to, both of them advertise the full cost of the packages. And this wouldn't just be limited to cable, this will impact quite a few services out there. 
All right, next up, Pluto TV is continuing to add more NBC content. Uh, recently, Pluto TV and NBC Universal announced a partnership that would bring a ton of live channels. Uh, recently, they added a 24-7 Murder She Wrote and Little House on the Prairie channel. He's showing other NBC Universal channels, but now NBC Sports is now live 24-7. Now, the NBC Sports cable network shut down some time ago, but now there's a free version that offers basically a collection of um, content from their different uh, programs and YouTube and online media, we'll call it, brought together into a single 24-7 channel of sports-related content. It's one more sports network on Pluto TV with this. So you get all kinds of great on-demand sports news through a variety of sources, including CBS and others with this deal. A lot of channels coming to Pluto TV. They often don't announce them early. This one was, but it's now live on Pluto TV. All right, now, recently it was reported that Amazon is close to paying $150 million to stream an NFL playoff game next season. Now, this year, Peacock streamed an exclusive NFL playoff game. I know that upset many people, but apparently it was very successful for Peacock. It drove a lot of subscriptions, and honestly, the stream seemed to do very well. In my experience watching, it had no problems. Now, Amazon, who's had Thursday Night Football for several years now, is reportedly um, in talks to pay 100 or close to, the CNBC report says, $150 million to stream an NFL playoff game next season. Look for this to become more and more common. You can see how the NFL may say, hey, $150 million for a single TV game to be a streaming exclusive? Pay up, we'll love to take that money. And because of that, I expect that that will become more and more common. Keep an eye on it. If this becomes official, we'll have full coverage here and at corecardsnews.com. If you're a YouTube TV fan, um, Z Family, a new package of Indian channels, is now available as YouTube TV continues to grow its number of add-ons you can add to the base package. This one is $14 a month. It joins an already offered Spanish plan, which offers 30 Spanish language channels for $34.99. It includes a uh, good list of different uh, channels from there. If you are a fan, I know you're probably familiar with like Sling TV's international packages. Well, now YouTube TV has a competitive service there to give international channels. Hopefully that becomes more common. It wasn't that long ago if, for example, you moved from India to the United States, watching content from India was very hard. It's becoming increasingly easy to be able to access content no matter where you live in the world, as long as you're willing to pay. Check that out, link in the show notes if you wanna learn more. All right, now this story is interesting as AT&T just suffered a massive outage, but a new study out there from Pew Research Center says 95% of all adults use the internet, and those who live in rural America heavily rely on wireless connections to for a majority of their internet. I'm actually seeing a growing number of people I know not use home internet, uh, that they use exclusively their phone. Now these are often people who are uh, more elderly, who don't stream content, of just use an antenna or who are maybe trying to save money. But in some places, I still think they're a very small minority. I often say this, internet can't be considered a true core cutting expense because most people need it for all kinds of other stuff and would use it and have home internet even if they didn't stream TV. But according to this, people who live in rural America with bad internet connection overwhelmingly rely on a wireless internet there much more than people who live in major cities who may just come home and connect to their Wi-Fi instead of relying on Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile to supply them home internet. Question for you, do you know anybody who goes completely wireless? Now, this is becoming a little easier because you have 5G home internet services from places like T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T. But you might hear, know somebody who just has a cell phone wireless plan and doesn't pay for a home internet? Leave me a comment, let me know. Spectrum has agreed to change its advertising about its mobile wireless service. Now, for a while, it's been advertising it could save you up to $1,500. Verizon complained about that. And now, um, Spectrum has agreed to alter its um, marketing, saying um, to make it a little bit more clear on what you will really save by switching to Spectrum wireless versus uh, using something like T-Mobile, Verizon, or other networks. This comes as these wireless companies have started to kind of crack down on these um, resellers. Spectrum actually uses the Verizon network. I'm sure Verizon wasn't very happy about their marketing for that. Speaking of wireless, and our last story before we get into the question of the day, Dish Network re, um, head of wireless announces he is leaving. 
as there's more questions about the business future. Dish is increasingly trying to become a wireless provider. They own Boost Mobile and they have the whole Dish wireless network. They're building out their own network. Currently in many areas, they rely on other wireless companies to supply the physical network, but they're launching and just recently launched more areas, their own wireless network. Look for this to become a big issue. But now that the head is leaving, there's a lot of questions about the future of that. I still think Dish is going to do just fine. I think they're a good fourth competitor in the market. And if you want a six, um, you want competition, you want to keep the prices of wireless and innovation of wireless going, you're going to want to push for more competition and Dish could bring that. So we'll see what happens there. All right, question of the day. Related to the cable network shutdown, I've been asked what networks I believe are most likely to shut down. Now, I've been asked this by many people. I thought today was a great day to answer that question. If you have a question though for me, you want me to answer in one of these videos, leave a comment down below. Start off with something like a question for Luke. If I didn't answer your question, please re-ask it and I'll do my best to answer it in a future video. So what networks do I think are most likely to shut down in 2024? Kids Network's number one. Increasingly, kids networks are becoming more popular with adults than they are with kids. Cartoon Network, for example, is actually and during prime time, seeing its average age 18 and older, well older than its target demographic. That's why we see things like Adult Swim starting earlier. We see them do, running classic uh, Cartoon Network shows from the 90s and early 2000s in those early time slots to try to capture the people who are in their 20s and 30s who may remember growing up with Cartoon Network in the 90s and 2000s and want to relive those shows. Maybe nostalgia will pull them in because... Let's be honest, kids are going to YouTube and Disney Plus and other places to watch their content, and it's not cable television. Other ones are all those sub-channels, the MTV2s, the smaller networks out there. Increasingly, it raises the question, even though those are mostly reruns, you're still paying people to manage those networks, create bumpers, create schedules, and the cost of sending that out. When you can increasingly move that to services like Paramount Plus, Peacock, Disney Plus, why? have reruns on cable when you can say, hey, if you want to see reruns of that, go to Disney Plus for the Disney Plus channel. We'll have to keep a very close eye on it, but I think those are the two ones out there. I still think we're a few years away from thing, a major network like a Disney channel from shutting down, but I do think there's a growing pressure on them at this moment that we could see, that, um, especially some of the smaller ones like Disney XD or Disney Junior go away. We recently saw um, Spectrum and Disney agreed to drop multiple Disney networks like FXX and others out there um, to remove it. Sorry about that. thought that was muted. But keep an eye on this. We'll see more cable networks shut down in the future. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll be back again real soon. And let me know what you think. What cable networks do you think are most likely to shut down in 2024? Take care. Be safe. Have a fantastic day, everybody.